Hello everybody and welcome back to a Envisions Algebra 2 Topic 4 Lesson 1 um, video. In this example, we're going to look at example 4 and we're going to graph the reciprocal function. So how do you graph the reciprocal function of y equals 1 over x? So let's define the reciprocal function. We have not talked about the reciprocal function um, as of yet, so let's define it. So the reciprocal function maps every non-zero real number to its reciprocal. Okay, so that's nice, those are lots of words, but what does this really mean? What is, what is mapping every non-zero real number to its reciprocal actually mean? Well, let's dive into this, let's go look. Okay, I'm going to grab this. Get a new sheet here. Put that in there. Move this up a little bit. You guys get to see my nice formatting skills. All right, so step one. Let's really think about what the domain and range are for our function here. So consider domain and range. All right, looking at this, is there a value that x cannot be? If x is this value, we're going to have issues. We're going to have problems. So think about what value cannot be in the denominator. What value would make this undefined? And while you do that, just while you're thinking, I'm going to write some things out. So domain. What is that value that x cannot be? And if x is that value, then we're going to have, we're going to have issues. We're going to have undefined. We're going to have an undefined value. So x cannot equal 0. Because if you have a 0 in the denominator, you have an undefined function. You cannot have zero in the denominator. You can have zero in the numerator, but you cannot have it in the denominator. Okay, since x cannot equal zero, there is a value that y cannot equal. And because this is basically like a one-to-one, -one, y cannot equal zero either. Because if y is equal to zero, think about this. Remember with this constant, this inverse, you could actually have x equals 1 over y. So if y is equal to 0, then we still have that situation of an undefined function. All right, step two. I'm going to do this in blue, I guess. I thought red, but then I thought, ah, we need to be a little bit mellow today. So I'm going to do step two in blue. I'm still going to pull red because there are four different steps. Let's graph the function. Graph the function. Hi, right, so we're just gonna make ourselves a table here. Um, I'm just gonna make it this long. Move it down here. This is my, I don't know why that blue line always shows up. This is my X, this is my Y. So when X is negative, Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 1, 2, 3, 0. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 2, 3. So when x is negative 3, y or f of x is 1 over 3. This is negative 1 over 2, negative 1. This is undefined. And then this is going to be... 1 over 1, which is 1, 1 half, 1 third. All right, so if I were to graph this function, and I'm just going to go to decimal so you guys get a nice function here. And not seeing my chicken scratch, y equals 1 divided by x. Uh, let's go down to where we could see 3. And let's grab by graph. If we ever 
get back into the classroom. I have a little graphing. Um, put it back up. It didn't go anywhere. I have a little graphing stamp that y'all could use on paper if you guys do not have graph paper. And I think I just scrunched that. There we go. Move that down. I don't know. I'm just cleaning this up. And that's what the graph looks like. All right, so we did a tea table, kind of more like a weird H table, um, and we got our graph. Step three. Step three, ob observe the graph of Y. Observe the graph of Y equals one over X as it approaches positive and negative infinity. So observe the graph of y, of y equals one over x as it's APP positive and negative infinity. So you're looking at the end behaviors of this graph. All right, so here's this end, there's that end. We do have a vertical asymptotes right here that is not a dotted line we do have a vertical asymptote right here so what this does go down to negative infinity this goes up to positive infinity as we hit that vertical asymptote um so let's look at as we go to positive i don't know why this goes all the way up there so I'm just going to pick some numbers, and this is going to be x and y, I don't know, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 1, I don't know, just really big numbers. I think I just did 10,000 twice, 100,000, so on and so forth. So we're gonna see that the value of y actually gets smaller and smaller. We get closer and closer to zero. We get closer and closer to a value of zero. Or is it zero? Yeah, we get closer and closer to zero. Our fractions become smaller and smaller and smaller. We're getting closer and closer to zero. So we're looking at what's called an asymptote. And if I go back to the book, let's get through all these steps. Because on step three, they have the definition of an asymptote. So an asymptote is a line that a graph approaches. Asymptotes guide the end behavior of the function. So this is a value that the end behavior of your graph gets closer and closer to. And the whole reason I point out it's the end behavior of the graph is because you can actually have a graph that oscillates around the asymptote, but as long as it's getting converging to a single value, that's your asymptote. So you have to look at the end behavior. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches zero. The same is true as the x value approaches negative infinity. So the line y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. And like when I first drew the graph here, I said we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals zero. We also have that value in which our graph is approaching here, which is y equals zero. So y equals zero is a horizontal. A S Y M P T O T E and uh, X equals zero is a vertical. A S Y M P T O T E. All right. Okay, now step four. I think I answered step four and step three, but step four. is going to be observe the graph, the graph of y equals one divided by x as x approaches a p p r o a c h approaches zero for positive and negative values. 
for POS and negative values. Okay, and again, the whole reason we picked zero is because we know that my domain cannot equal zero. So we want to see what's happening around that zero. Right, and so again, we'll draw a table to see what's happening around that zero. And I lost my table up here. Move it down. Move it down. And what we're going to find is on the left-hand side, it's positive on the right hand side, it is negative. So we kind of break this apart. So I don't know, this is X, I'm using red, X and Y. We're gonna do the positive. So one, uh, get closer to zero. Let's see. And so on and so forth. So this is gonna be one, 10, 100. A thousand, ten thousand, and so on. All right, so this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If I did, if I looked at this, this is going to positive infinity. While this gets closer and closer to zero, it's not going to touch zero. It will get closer and closer, but never actually touch. It's like you're getting closer, you're getting halfway to the wall, and then another half to the wall, and then another half to the wall, but you're never technically. Well, technically you can't touch the wall, but theoretically you'll never touch the wall. Now let's do this for the negatives. Doo -ba -doo. All right, so here we go. Here are my negatives. This is X and Y. We're gonna do negative one, negative one over 10, negative one over 100, negative one over 1,000, negative one over 10,000. So basically, we're going to go to about zero, but from the negative side. So this is going to be negative 1, negative 10, negative 100, negative 10,000, 10,000. And so again, we're getting closer and closer to that negative infinity. So for negative values of x, as x approaches 0, f of x approaches the negative infinity. The domain of the function excludes zero, so the graph will never, never, ever, ever touch zero. The line of x equals zero is now called our vertical asymptote, because it's never, ever going to cross this line. So there you go. We have horizontal and vertical asymptotes with this um, rational function. This We will see that we will have points where our graph can't touch or can't cross. We'll have asymptotes. So as we go more into Topic four, we're going to see how rational functions behave and how we have different types of domains and how we have our end behaviors or our, our, our graph reacting around those domains. So this topic is all about how this behavior happens with rational functions. All right, so there you go. Step four again is finding that vertical asymptote. Um, for an equation such as this one that does not involve a lot of parameters, graphing by hand makes sense. As you encounter more complex equations, it may help to use the appropriate technology to graph. So this one can be done by a calculator um, or by hand. I did the calculator just so you didn't see my chicken scratch, but here's your final graph. And um, in the triads, you're going to look at this graph. This has a constant of 10, so it's a little bit different now. But if I still divide by 0, I still have an undefined function for y. So drag the points on the graph to change its shape. Drag the gray points to change the location of the asymptote. So I could change the asymptote here. Again, you can see this graph getting closer and closer. It will never cross. All right, so um, I will catch you in the next video.